Hi everybody, I'm Franny. And I'm Heidi. And today we're going to give you our one year owner's perspective on the BMW i8. Woo! Now we've already done a complete review on this car. Before we actually own the car. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll go ahead and link that up here so you can check that out. What we want to do today is just go over all the things we've done to the car and sort of our thoughts and opinions on the car now that we've had it for a full year. And whether or not we would actually go ahead and buy the car again if given the opportunity. The first thing I want to cover is something we did kind of right when we got the car pretty soon thereafter was to put on paint protection film on the front car from pretty much the A-pillar forward and then we ceramic coated the car after that. Now we also have a video for that too so I'll go ahead and link that up here too but I think that was one of the best things we could have done because it makes the car so easy to keep clean. I can use a duster on it just a big car duster and then to clean the wheels I also ceramic coated the wheels and it makes it super easy to do those too. And if you look around right now, you'll notice that there's a lot of snow on the ground. And one of the reasons why we wanted to protect the car was really for all of the stuff that they put on the roads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the salt and all the rocks and gravel and stuff. So it really helps a lot. I think that was very well worth doing. Right. So sure. that's a big A plus. We're really happy about that. So the next thing I'm going to talk about is the tint that's been done to the car. And personally, I like the tint on the car. One of the reasons why I like it is that it keeps the car so dark that people can't really see like what kind of stuff you're storing in the car. And I think it looks really cool, but Franny doesn't like the tint nearly as much. And I'll have to agree with her when driving the car at night. So go ahead and elaborate on that. For two reasons, I really don't like the tint that much. Now uh, with Heidi, I'd like the look of it. Right. But two reasons I don't like it is when you're out driving around, it's very difficult to see in the car. Now, some I imagine people get tinting for that exact reason. But I think it also makes it a little bit easier for people to be a little less than completely cordial on the road. If they can actually see a person in the car, I think they react better to that. Right. And this car garners a decent amount of attention. So that's my one first point. But then the second one is at night, it's so hard to see out of the side of the car. So we have roundabouts and things on our travels that we have to go through. And when you do, you can't see the edge from the left side out the driver's side window because of the tint. And I never know where the edge of the roundabout is. Right. So uh, I think it's also a safety concern as well. Right. And Franny is driving the car more at night. She does drive it into work. And so I can understand her complaint. And I certainly do understand it. Now, most of the time when I'm driving, it'll be the grocery store and it won't be that dark. But when I have driven at night, it's been kind of that way as well, where you're like, eh, yeah. I can't really see where I'm going. Mm -hmm. The next thing I'd like to cover is sort of the efficiency and the charging versus the gas, because this car is a hybrid. The EPA says this car gets about 76 miles per gallon E, so that's our little adjusted miles right. per gallon, in sport mode. And on just the engine, you can see somewhere between 29 and 30 miles per gallon on the car. Which isn't really that bad. I mean, no, it's actually, it's quite good for a good. car like right. this and with this performance. And part of that is because the car is actually pretty light, mm -hmm. but it has a very small battery. It's only 7.1 one kilowatt hours of which about five or so is really useful and we only get about a 15 mile range and that's what the spec said and I would say would you say we, we get somewhere between 14 and 16 17 something I've seen like it that? go as high as 19 so we're just talking about the electric range just the obviously electric, yes. we get a higher range <laughs> than just 19 right so it fluctuates <laughs> back and forth a little bit right and I did some calculations our our energy here in Colorado costs about 12 cents per kilowatt hour right and so to fill it up takes about 60 cents and it easily charges overnight. That's right. no problem on a, a 110 outlet just in the garage, no modifications, just use the charger that came with the car. Right, yeah, mm -hmm. completely drained. I think I've seen it say like either seven or seven and a half hours. Yeah, there you go. So there you go, overnight. Yeah, really. so that works really, really well. Now, if you, our gas here, let's say our gas is, mm, I don't know, let's say it's $3 a gallon for premium, which right. is what you have to put in here. It's actually a little less, but let's just use that. Mm -hmm. And if we're going 15 miles, that means we're going to at 29, Nine miles per gallon, we're going to be somewhere around a dollar fifty-five, something like that. So it's about a ninety-five cent difference between the two. So right. you know, we're not we're not taking huge loads of money to the bank by using the electric. No, for and when Franny goes downtown 
Um, it is far enough that she will absolutely have to use some of the gas to mm -hmm. get down there. So we know that we will have to fill up the car. But it's a really good point, though, because most of our trips that we've found with this car, we can do almost all of it in right. electric. It's going to be close. So that's me going to the grocery store yep. mm -hmm. or, or like getting yeah, your hair just going done or whatever. An, yep. Yeah, just mm -hmm. on errands. I literally like I'm just kind of pulling back in and seeing the E on empty. And that's the other thing is even with Franny driving downtown once a week, we're only filling the car up like what, once a month maybe? Yeah, I know. It's, it's so, few and far between on the fill -ups. I hate trips to the gas station. Yep. So I really like the fact that we don't have to visit the gas station nearly as often. <laughs> so it's more of a convenience thing, I guess, is the point. That's pretty cool. The electric bit also helps with the performance as well. So when you're in sport mode, it will torque fill with the electric motors if there's enough power right. in there. So it's kind of a really neat feature I think on the car and one that we were kind of hoping we would use and it's actually been a big plus I think. Yep. So I want to talk to you about the practicality of the car. I think I'm the one that uses it more often for errands and such. And one of the things that I often do is I'll consider before I take it out, what kind of errands I'm going to be going on, possibly where I'm going to be parking. Some of the things that I usually want to consider is how easy it's going to be to get in and out of a parking lot, how tight the cars generally are parking. Mm -hmm. And you know, what kind of parking lot there is. So when I go and get my hair done, um, I love the parking lot there because I can usually park really far away and it's a really nice drive and I really enjoy driving my car and I don't have to worry about cars around me. So do you feel <laughs> that that's inconvenient to you? Does that does that degrade your your fun with the car and sort of your experience at all? I, it, it, I do take it into account a little bit. Um, if I know there's going to be super tight parking, it, there it literally is um, an experience for me, at least it happens in our garage. If I park too close to the wall in our garage and I pull too far over just to keep the car away from the other car, I won't be able to open the door up. Yeah. And I actually can't get out of the car. So it is something to consider, but I would say nine times out of 10 or 95 times out of 100, I will be able to find a place to park. And if anything, I try to find a parallel parking spot as well. Oh, I will yeah, never true, have too. to worry about it if I'm parking on the street. Now we do have a small issue when we pull into the garage, we have to pull the mirrors in. So the bird's eye view camera doesn't work when the right. mirrors are already in. So that's something we learned. The turning radius on the car is pretty crummy. So you might have to kind of do your turns a couple of times in very tight right. areas. The car to me feels ginormous because all of our cars are fairly small. Right. It's wide and it's long. But um, if you remember from the uh, Tesla review right. and some of the pictures from that, the Tesla uh, Model 3 is about the same size as this car. But I was right. just really surprised. I was like, I thought that was kind of a smallish car. The next area I want to talk to you about is the door access and in particular, the butterfly doors. So they look really cool and they do attract a lot of attention and they are really Great, but it does mean getting in and out of the car for one. You have to go in butt first. So that might not be something that you're used to men, especially it's more of a ladies thing when they have a skirt on and it's a tight pencil skirt that they'll go butt first into a car. So you kind of have to pretend like you're wearing a skirt. <laughs> the reverse happens when it comes to getting out. And so definitely make sure that you try that. But honestly, it's more how you do it than just sort of the obstacle of that of that door sill. So if you go in butt first, swing your legs around to get right. in, and then the reverse, as Heidi said, to swing your legs out, then you sort of push up on the door sill and lift yourself out. And it becomes sort of a fluid motion after a while. I know there's a lot of silly videos of people falling out of these cars, but it's yeah. really not that bad they're at all. They're just being silly. They're just being silly and they're just... <laughs> you know, whatever. But actually, I haven't found it to be that big of a deal. Now, you do something also as well when you get out of the car to make it easier when you get in the next time. Oh, right. And because of the steering wheel, I have to push the seat all the way back and then I'll sit in it and then I'll bring it all the way back forward because mm -hmm. my legs are so short. So it's not so much of an issue for Franny because she has longer legs. No, and it's pretty easy for me, but that works really well for Heidi. So something to try if you're thinking about one of these cars. Right. Um, other thing to remember 
about these seats is they don't have a memory. Now, my opinion on the doors is that I like them better than just normal swingy doors because the swingy doors seem to, in order to get enough egress in and out of them, they have to move almost all the way out. Right. And you almost never have that kind of room, certainly not in our garage and in most parking lots as well. As the doors go up, they take up about half the width of an open door. I find that pretty easy to get in and out of, and I think it's a good use of space. As I mentioned before, this car is a 2015 model. So BMW installed their iDrive from that period. And I don't know, it's not super awesome. Um, it's missing the Apple, I, the Apple Play and the Android Auto. Right. So it doesn't really interface really well with your phone either. Now the navigation on it is okay, I guess. It sort of works. It's kind of what you'd expect from, I don't know, four or five years ago. Right, yeah. But I find the whole system not super duper useful. It's kind of a small screen as well, so I'm it's not sure. It's a little clunky is what exactly. I would say. Exactly, yes. It's, we don't use it that much. just don't much. use it that much, I mean, you know? That's the yeah. other thing. Mm -hmm. And phones do 99% of what you need them to do anyway. So Exactly. So navigation is the thing, right? And right. so I'm fine with it almost being on my phone and just using Google navigation works pretty well. And then you can Bluetooth the audio to the... Uh, interior sound system and then it takes a few tries to kind of figure that out but once you get it sort of sorted it does work and so that's right. it, so you'll be able to hear it through the speakers and things so I think that's pretty helpful I guess I do like the map on it so if yeah. you if you're in a neighborhood and you want to kind of see a bird's eye view of where you are I, I actually do like that yeah that does help now BMW also has something called their BMW connected app that goes right. on your phone and that's so common with cars nowadays but it's actually I find that actually very useful useful. Right. It allows you to set the climate inside the car so you can climatize now or you can climatize to a schedule. Now one kind of curious yeah. thing is that you can't set the temperature. What? Yeah, I know. It's kind of weird. So I guess it just basically climatizes to whatever you've got the climate system set to on the car. So if you get set to 72 degrees, it'll just warm it up to or cool it down either way. Now, the cool thing about that, of course, this being a plug-in hybrid, if it's plugged in while you're doing that, you're not using any power out of the batteries because none of these accessories are actually physically connected to the engine. Right. So because of that, they're all little electric motors to run the air conditioning. And then the heat is a heat pump on this car, which is kind of cool. Pretty certain about that. And it works really well, but if it's plugged in, then you're just using your wall current to heat up your car. You get in your car, it could be freezing outside or even cold in your garage. And oh, the, which sometimes yeah, gets. Yeah, which sometimes gets. <laughs> and then uh, the car's toasty warm and you're tootling down the road and you're totally comfortable. And you're not turning on all the heated seats and turning the heat yeah. all the way on and stuff. How and, much do you yeah. like that? Oh, I love it when I go in the garage and the car feels like it does inside. Yeah, it's nice so and warm. So that part I really like. That. Yes. Now the app also has a few other things. It gives you the location the last time the car was parked, which is kind of nice. It'll tell you if the car is mm -hmm. actually in transit. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, it gives you um, efficiency on your car and things like uh, how you're doing electric wise and how you did gas and your miles per gallon and right. all that sort of stuff with history, which is kind of nice. The other thing it'll also do for you in the app is tell you if you got service intervals coming up. So if you need an oil change right. or spark plugs or whatever needs to get done on the engine, simple stuff like that. Now, yeah, I think you can also schedule an appointment with the BMW uh, oh, dealership as well through I the app and could, stuff. Yeah. It's actually really useful. It's on your phone. You always have access to it. That part Modern I really like. Yeah, so that's really cool. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the maintenance we've had to do on the car and re any repairs we've done over the year. So it's actually been really, really good. Uh, when we bought the car and we actually, when we had it into the shop to get the PPF and the ceramic coating, right. we were noticing that the big battery was dropping and that's the drive battery kept dropping. And that turned out to be a bad little battery. So right. all of these cars have a 12 volt battery and of course they're high voltage battery. And the 12 volt battery handles all the accessories on the car, does mm -hmm. the same stuff it does on every car, but it had a bad cell in it. So it was, it was dropping and the big battery will go ahead and charge that battery. But since it had to do it all the time, it was dying. So we took it to the dealership, it was still barely under warranty at the time. And right. they replaced the battery. And at the same time, we also had the rear view mirror, weirdly, replaced because the one of the home link buttons didn't work. We I don't know. We could get the garage door program. Yeah, it wouldn't program properly. They spent like two seconds on it. They're like, yeah, whatever. And they and just put a new one in. It was super expensive. It was like, we spent like a grand 
Well, we didn't spend a grand, but it would have yeah. been a grand between the battery and the home links. Yeah, but the battery wasn't that expensive. Right. I mean, total cost on the battery was close to three hundred dollars because it's it's actually keyed VIN wise right. to the car. Right. So whatever. But it's actually worth having yeah. BMW do that for you in the future, even though exactly. battery replacements are pretty easy. Yep. Yeah. So the other thing I did on the car, of course, was an oil change. Did a video on that as right. well. I'm going to link that up there too, so you can see it. The oil change is actually super simple on the car. It's it's not hard at all. It's just that standard sort of cup oil filter thing with an element in the inside of it. I really like those because you can see the element. It doesn't use that much oil at all, and it, but it's kind of a weird oil. We made sure we bought all BMW parts oil and also the filter as well. Now we have a couple of things coming up that we want to do on the car as well. I want to swap out the air filter, the cabin filter, and then I think our struts are a little weak on the door. It should really go all the way up and stay all the way up. And it goes like just, just stops sort of shy of the top and right. just sort of hangs out up there. I was talking to Pat from I, I Ate Pat's I, Garage right. and he said that, and he just did a video on swapping out these struts. So check that out as well. But he said that they kind of go out after about every year and <laughs> they're supposed to be close to 40,000 miles, but. Yeah, this car only has about, what, 18,000 maybe? Yeah, so really, we haven't put that many miles on. No, we haven't, no. but that strut really should be I think we're gonna have to replace it. Not the end of the world, but uh, something to do. So one of the things that we also knew that we would be doing is we would be driving this car in the winter time. So as far as a maintenance item goes, we often have snow tires and summer tires, and we usually, for convenience sake, put them on separate rims. What I had no idea, which would be very difficult, was to find a rim size and a wheel size that would work with this car. And because of the staggered sizes, it made it a little bit hard to find snow tires. And in fact, my advice to you is if you are looking for Porsches or BMWs or anything else that has staggered tires, to go to Nokian first. And that is kind of where I wish that I had gone, but they really aren't that commonly listed in some of the big websites like tires.com. So I spent hours and hours looking for snow tires and I'd find two that fit the front, but then I wouldn't find them for mm -hmm, the back mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. I was finally able to find Nokian and I won't even attempt to say the name of the type of snow tires that they are. We were able to find the rims on eBay for a pretty good price, just under a thousand dollars. Now these are just the stock rims. In fact, they're identical right. to the rims we had for the car already. So they're the standard right. stock rims, the W's that come with the car. And they had some road rash. They weren't perfect. Right and we had snow tires installed and we had a little mishap and you probably have seen the i8 flat tire video that we put out mm -hmm. but one of the things that we hadn't considered is this this car gets a flat tire how low to the ground it is and ground clearance when putting a jack underneath it so, yeah so that made it kind of difficult and also of course the car doesn't come with a spare tire either right. so you we were lucky because we had the summer wheels and tire set as well so we, we can just lucky. grab the appropriate wheel and we were all set normally we have a tire repair kit which we did but that wouldn't have worked in this case and right. so worst case is we would have had to get towed and had we been someplace with no cell service would have been on foot until the nearest place. Yeah, so it could it have been a little bit of a bummer. Super but, inconvenient. Right? Yeah. But that's kind of the direction that cars are going in general. Yeah. So it's not mm -hmm. just the It's I totally eight. true. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty much all of our cars don't have spare tires on them. Not so, anything. right. So we have a, we have a tire repair kit that we use and a 12 volt compressor. And that usually, if you get a nail in the tire, it's going to work great for that. Right. You get a slash in the sidewall or in our case, a broken valve stem and no, not gonna work. So something else to think about with these modern cars, but snow tires are really important, especially in Colorado where we live because the temperature keeps going all over the place and so do the conditions. Right. So winter tires are formulated with a special type of rubber that gets much better traction in winter than normal tires or uh, summer tires do. And there's a good chance it could be beautiful out and you're out and about all day and then all of a sudden it starts to snow on your way home. <laughs> it actually did that to you not mm -hmm. too long ago. And right, it was bad. and it gets super 
super scary. So really fast. Right. And then all of a sudden you're running on summer tires and you're in a really bad place. Right. So having winter tires on the car, I think is a big benefit. It was a little bit expensive, but if you're going to drive the car in the winter, so we use this one um, as a winter car and we drive the Porsche Turbo, I know it sounds funny, as our snow car. Now I did drive this uh, to work one time when there was a lot of snow actually on the road. So pretty slippery conditions and a lot of ice and stuff. And I noticed that Interestingly, I had it in eco mode, which means it should pretty much be 100% electric and just the front wheels right. on the electric motor. But the engine was humming along the entire time. Yeah. And that's because the car realized that, oh, you know what? We're a little low on traction. So I'm going to fire up the engine right. and make it available. If we really need to keep that rear end planted or whatever we need to do, it's going to be ready to go. Because remember, they're not physically connected. Right. So you don't start up the engine and the front wheels will actually turn they have to be powered by the electric motor. So it's it's separate. Right. And finally, we'd like to give you our conclusions on the car after owning it for a year. Now I think Heidi and I are gonna have a little different take on the car, but I think between the two of us, we absolutely adore this car. Right. It, why don't you tell, why don't you tell what you think, Heidi? Well, despite the fact that I talk about parking and having to kind of consider that, it doesn't mean it couldn't be my only daily driver. I, I, I do like it a lot. I like like I said before, I hate having to fill up with gas. I like the fact that I can just come home, plug it in, and it literally will start over the very next day and have pretty much a full tank. So if we didn't have to take the car to downtown Denver I, and just tootled around here a lot, then we wouldn't even be filling it up with gas hardly at all. And mm -hmm. I love that yeah. fact. Mm -hmm. But I also like the attention. I like to be able to talk to people about the newer technology. There's a lot of people that will come up. I mean, I had like two people at the grocery store asking me about it. And funny, a lot of people think this car is 100% electric. They see it and maybe they see how yeah. interesting it looks. And I usually tell them, no, no, it's, 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 no, it's gasoline as well. It's yeah, a hybrid. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, I would definitely consider buying the car or even a newer version of this car. And I'm actually a little disappointed to hear that BMW will not continue after 2020 with the eyeline so yeah they're done making the car so um that's a good point because these cars when we bought this car now they're really on sale and right you know these cars you can't buy a car like this on the market unless you spend an enormous amount of money no so one of the things about the i8 is that it really doesn't do anything better than any other car. It just does a lot of things all together. And between the whole suite of things it does, there's very few cars that can actually say they're carbon fiber tub, that they're right. hybrid, that they're... Um, they look like a supercar. They car. look like a supercar. They've got these butterfly doors and all the great features they in this car good gas mileage. that get really good gas mileage, right. super easy to drive, built by a major manufacturer. Right. I mean, it's a really nice car. Really nice. And certainly for the 60,000 or so that these cars are trading at now between 60 right. and 70. Oh, this is a steal. This thing's awesome. So it's a really fun car. It's fast enough. It mm -hmm. may not be the fastest car on the road, but it's perfect for our roads. It's I think pretty fast off the line though. It is. So so right. it's quick and I think it's not overpowered as well. The minute you go, you know, into the mid threes and stuff, then the cars are just too fast. The fun's over too fast. Uh, one of the things people talk about with this is the, is the augmented sound. I wish that the, um, I wish you had a little more control over it so you could turn it off if you wanted to, or at least turn it down. You really only, you only only hear it in sport mode. She likes it quiet so. actually. <laughs> it's actually kind of nice. And I mean, it's right. okay. It's a good sound and right. it's, it sounds pretty sporty, but I, I <laughs> I think overall, I really love this car. I just love the way it drives. I love that it's quiet. I love the ride on it. There, I love the asymmetricalness <laughs> yeah, of it. Yeah, the styling on it is it's great. great. It really is. It's very interesting, very different. Mm -hmm. It's a very special car. And I can see maybe 10, 15 years down the road, these things being um, quite desirable because they didn't make a zillion of them. They only made about 2,000 of them for this model year, which isn't a huge production at all. So I don't know. It's a neat car it works well too it's comfortable it's a nice place to be um, and bmw will have to support it for 10 years following the discontinuation 
of the line. It's, so, a good, it's a good point because you know that the dealerships and the, and the car manufacturers are going to support this car going right. forward as so well. So they will so, have to support mm -hmm. it into 2030. Now we're hoping that it's not going to be super duper expensive, that there aren't going to be any problems, but I, you know, and looking in the forums and stuff, there's, there haven't been any major issues with no, this car. No, they've been all niggly stuff. Yeah, exactly. So, and the rest of the fit and, and finish on this stuff, it's not like there's broken buttons on it and stuff like that anywhere at all either. It seems to be holding up really well. I think our <laughs> final conclusion is, big question is, would we buy it again? And Heidi, what would you say? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't regret our decision to buy it when we did. No. No, we love the car. The 2019 cars, I think, had a little more power and a little more range, but it did a little bit. And, of course, you could get the Roadster, the which Roadster. was the Cabriolet. We might have to think about the we Roadster. We might have to think about that. <laughs> we really hope you enjoyed this. Hope you found it useful. Thank you so, so much for watching. And if you got any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below, and we'll get right to them. And a special thank you to our Patreon supporters. Mm, absolutely. So, all right. Well, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and a little bell next to it to get notified. Right. And you'll be notified next time we upload a video. We upload lots of stuff. We're in the middle of a Porsche 32 Carrera project. Right. Uh, we just finished a video and posted it on a Lamborghini Countach's oil change. So we right. do some kind of crazy nutty stuff too. All right. Well, thank you so, so much for watching. And until next time, safe travels. Bye.